Hi, I'm Chrissy O'Malley, and this is Better Science Teaching. What I'd like to talk to you about today is how engineering design projects are a little bit different than traditional science fair projects. Anyway, so I wanted to move forward with the differences between engineering design projects and scientific method projects, and some of the things you can do to make your engineering design project a little bit better so that um, it, it, your goals are set up in a way that your engineering design process is gonna go better, because I know that that's not um, necessarily intuitive to every student. So engineering style projects are different than a traditional scientific method project in some fundamental ways. Uh, you're going to use the engineering design process instead of the scientific method. So that's something that's really fundamental to the way that your project is going to, to move sort of chronologically. It's possible to do an engineering problem with a scientific method project. That's not what we're talking about here. So projects where I'm saying engineering style projects are frequently but not always projects about engineering. Um, sometimes projects about engineering are scientific method projects. Uh, but these projects are ones that use the engineering design process. Rather than a question, you're gonna come up with an engineering problem. Rather than a hypothesis, you use engineering goals. You build and modify a prototype instead of having a traditional experiment with traditional variables. And then you're gonna stop with your prototype editing once your solution that you've discovered meets all of your goals. So here's a comparison of some of these types. For scientific method, this is something that almost every student has seen before they do a science fair project. You have a question. You do a little bit of research about your question. You make a statement of a hypothesis, what you think will happen if you test your experimental design of what you think is going to happen um, based on your research and answer your question with it. You do some data analysis, you come up with results, and you report them. It's like regular scientific method -y stuff. For engineering design, instead of a question, you're going to come up with an engineering problem. You're going to make a statement about something that needs improvement or that maybe needs to be designed from scratch. You do research just like you do with the scientific method. You go and you look for um, ways other people have solved that problem, ways you could solve it, solutions that exist that maybe need some modification. You're going to come up with some engineering goals instead of a hypothesis. So instead of saying, I think that this will happen, then you're going to say, well, in order to solve this problem, these are the criteria that my solution needs to meet. Instead of doing an experiment and some testing, you're going to build a prototype. Instead of doing data analysis, you're going to test your prototype. This kind of goes with the testing thing, too. But, um, you're improving your prototype based on your testing, and then you report your results once you've reached a solution that meets all your criteria. So those are the major differences between the scientific method and engineering design. There's lots of charts of these. So if you're a teacher and you want to share this with your students, um, there's all kinds of diagrams for this, too. I just I didn't want to steal anybody's diagrams. Um, so what we're going to do um, when we make our engineering goals is we want to make sure that they're SMART, and this is an acronym. S stands for specific. We want to identify very specific criteria that we need our, our final product to meet. They have to be measurable. It has to be something we can measure. We can't just say the best or the worst or the longest. It has to be something we can actually identify. We want it to be achievable. It has to be something you can do. If you're trying to come up with time travel, you're going to have a problem with achievability. It has to be relevant. It needs to make sense for your solution. You know, if it, it has to be something that actually matters with the way that it works. You know, so colors are probably not great, relevant um, criteria for your project. You know, sometimes they might be. If you're doing something about light or um, some the way something photographs, you might need to use color. But for a lot of things, you know, if you're building a bridge, who cares what color it is? It has to be time-based. It has to be something you can actually accomplish before your science fair project is due. So you want to make sure that you don't make you don't pick something that's so hard to do in the time that you have that it's going to be impossible. Uh, if if it's something that um, that you want to make some big grandiose invention, um, maybe your engineering goals need to be a little bit more refined, more constrained your first year, and then you can always extend your project the next year. Okay, so here's a sample problem we're going to work at. Um, a couple of videos ago, I don't know, we did this in the spring, my daughter and I built a crane, which was an engineering 
badge for Junior Girl Scouts. So we're going to use this as our model. Uh, if you want to watch us do this, you can go find that video. I'm going to put the link below so you can see it. Especially if you're a Girl Scout, go check this out. It's totally doable to do STEM badges remotely at home. We did a bunch of them. We did the paddle boat. We did um, we did a balloon car. Uh, you could do robotics from home. That would all be all be great. So here with our crane, um, you could build a goal that says, "I will build a crane," or "I want to build a crane," or um, "I need a crane to lift something." That would not be an example of a smart goal. Um, it's not specific enough. We need to think about what kind of crane do you want to build? Is there a specific style that you have in mind or does it not matter? What do you need your crane to be able to do? This is not a measurable goal. How do you know when you've built a crane? Is, is the crane that my daughter built that was made out of junk from our junk drawer, was that was that the sort of crane you need or do you need one that can lift a car? Because you're probably not going to be able to get that out of your junk drawer. <clears throat> this might be something that's achievable def depending on how you define crane. So defining the things that you need is an important part of writing your goal. So sometimes that'll come up with your research. You'll do your research before you make your goals. And so when you're writing your goals, you're going to think about what your words actually mean. Relevant is usually the easiest part. Um, you know, if I'm trying to build a crane, anything that's actually part of that task is going to be relevant to this project. Time-based. Can I get my crane built before my project deadlines? If I have to do a lot of things and make a very large, sophisticated crane, I may have trouble with keeping those things done before my deadlines. If I'm making a small one out of cardboard, that would be a lot easier to pull off. Okay, so now that we know a little bit about our SMART goals, uh, we're going to take a look at, at what these might be. So, first thing we need to do is define the things in our problem. We need to identify what we mean by I want to build a crane. We have to set limits on our prototype by doing that. So if I say it's okay for me to build a crane that's going to fit on my table, then the shorter guy is going to work. If if I'm saying that I have to build something that's going to swing a wrecking ball or lift a car, that's that's a different definition of what I need to build. All right, so here's some things I came up with that we could actually measure about our crane. Um, how much weight or how much mass does it have to lift? So then I called that lifted mass. How tall should it be? So I called that crane height. How big should the base be? It's base size. Um, what's the range of motion? How much can it rotate? How high can it lift something? So that has to do with um, how my crane's going to function. How fast can it lift something? You know, do I want it to go kind of slowly or does it have to go really, is there a reason that it has to do that? Um, you want to make sure that that's, that's relevant to your purpose with your crane. How much does it cost to build? I don't want to have for my science fair project to build a crane that costs a thousand dollars. I want to build one for a couple of bucks. So I'm going to try to keep that cost down. How much does my crane weigh? Um, if I pick up my device that I've created, how much does it weigh? So a lot of these things, if you've done um, if you've done Science Olympiad, you may notice that a lot of these things are um, somewhat reminiscent of the design requirements that they'll give you for different um, what we call build events in Science Olympiad. But we had a, a robotics challenge a couple years back that had a lot of these things, you know, and, and there's reasons you'd want to worry about these. So, for instance, you would really be concerned about the base of your crane because if it's too small and it doesn't have enough mass, it's really going to have trouble uh, lifting something. And so those, those sorts of ratios become really important with the design of these things. Hopefully that stuff comes out in your research. You know, so what, what ratios you would have, maybe something that you, you come across when reading about cranes and you can build that into your, your criteria. So think about how much better these are than using the goal, I will build a crane, because these are things that are very specific, they're measurable, they're achievable, they're relevant to our project, and they're something that we can accomplish in the amount of time, they're time-based. Okay, so now it's time to test our prototype. This is the kind of table that I'm going to have my students create anytime they're doing an engineering design style project. What they've got in the first column there is all of their variables, their lifted mass, which was uh, how much mass does my crane have to be able to lift, the crane height, which is the maximum height for my crane, 
the maximum base size of my crane. And so the inspiration for that one is you can imagine if you have to drive a crane down a road, it has to be able to fit on the road. So that's, that's where I got sort of the inspiration for having a base size. Uh, the rotation, so how much my crane has to be able to pivot. The lift height, which I put at 90 centimeters. So if you compare that to the crane height, if I'm saying my maximum height is 100, but I have to be able to lift up to 90, then that means that my the height of my crane is gonna have to be at least 90, um, but less than 100. Um, my lift rate, which invites kind of another whole problem because um, there's gotta be a mechanism for the way that I draw the string up the crane so that I can lift anything. Am I doing it by hand? Am I using a motor? So there's a criteria there. The cost of my crane, four bucks. I don't know. If I have to build a bunch of these things, I want them to be inexpensive. And then the weight of my crane. So if I'm going to try to lift a mass of 100 grams just to be able to deal with torque, it's going to have to be probably at least 100 grams. Otherwise, my crane's at risk of falling over. And so I'm going to need a heavier base on the bottom. Um, for Science Olympia, we used to accomplish that with pennies, a bag of pennies that was on our robot arm. Anyway, so what I've done here is I have filled in some data that I might collect for my first prototype. So I'm gonna go off and build a crane and then I'm going to test it for each of these things and see if I get close to the target value. So this is a hypothetical crane. What I'm saying here is that I tried to lift a mass and the highest that I could lift was 80 grams. So that was one thing I tested. I measured the height. My height was within the parameter. Um, I measured the base. My base was smaller than the maximum base size, so that's good. I measured the amount of rotation I had. I only had 160 degrees. Maybe there was something that was getting in the way of that or some of the attachment points. Um, I have a lift height of 90 centimeters. I have a lift rate of two centimeters per second. Cost of six bucks. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't know why it costs six bucks. Maybe I bought a motor for the for the crank, and you know that cost me a dollar fifty. Who knows? Um, and then I have a crane weight of three hundred grams. And so what I'm going to do when I go back and work on prototype two, I put a series of things in here that say okay. So when I'm working on that prototype, I know that I need to be, somehow increase how much mass can go up my crane. And so I need to identify what's keeping that low and fix it. My crane height, my base size are both okay, so I'm gonna to try to not mess with that too much. First, I need more rotation, so I'm gonna see whatever is getting in the way of getting in, getting that rotation in and figure out how to get a few more degrees out of it. My lift rate and height are both good. Um, so I'm not gonna mess with those unless somehow changing one of those helps me. You know, so maybe my lift rate is good because I put a motor on my crane, but it's in the way of the rotation. And so maybe I can think about a different way to mount that. My crane cost was a little high though. Prototype one cost $6 and I'm trying to stay under a $4 budget. So maybe I need to see if I can replace something um, with something that's less expensive or something out of the recycle bin. You know, we can come up with lots of ways to do that. And then my crane weight, I have here that it was too heavy. Um, I'm not sure depending on what's going on with my crane. If my mass that I was able to lift is too low um, and my crane weight is too high, I may be looking at a problem of redistributing where my mass is. I may want to bring it lower so that the base is heavier and the center of gravity is closer to the surface that it's sitting on. Maybe that'll help. I don't know. And so I can take those notes and say, okay, here's what I have to do with prototype two. Go make changes to prototype two, bring it back and measure it, replace all those notes there with actual numbers. And with the engineering design project process, I'm going to do that until I get to a point where my measured, uh, my measured values against my goals with target values um, is exceeding those goals. And then I know I'm ready to share my solution. Of course, the other possibility is you either run out of money or you run out of time. And so, you know, if that happens, just be honest with, with your judges about that. You know, say, hey, I did this a couple of times. This is the best I could do. I had to stop building prototypes at this point though because I ran out of money, I ran out of time. Um, don't don't say that you got bored. <laughs> don't say that to your judges. Um, so you can say you ran out of money, you ran out of time. Um, and then an important next step to make is if I wanted to further improve it, this is what I would do. And you wanna say, you know, if if you don't get to the point where your prototype is matching the goals that you set for your project, you want to make sure that you can and you can 
tell your judges or your teacher about what you would do next. What would be the obvious next thing? Um, so I've found in my experience, let's see if I have to point. I found in my experience that this chart really helps um, because it's a way of putting numbers behind what you're doing. You know, you don't want to just say, I'm going to build a crane. Here's a crane. Um, because then you're really, you're really just doing show and tell. There's not really a lot of um, quantitative research and measurement that's gone into that, which is really sort of the heart and soul of doing a scientific um a scientific project or an engineering design project. So I hope that that helps you understand the differences between engineering design and scientific method. Um, stay safe, be well, and I'll see you soon. Have a great day.